Um, good evening, folks. Wanted to provide a little update this evening. Um, it's been another day of kind of nonstop information gathering. Um, we have about half of our team working on this problem um, full time, and uh, we're continuing to carry out interviews with uh, sort of the, the most knowledgeable people we can we can get a hold of. And of course, that excludes many people who are incredibly knowledgeable because. Obviously, the most knowledgeable people on this are really busy and not necessarily able to um, spend time speaking with us. But nevertheless, um, a lot of people have been very gracious with their time. And I just wanted to sort of, again, provide a little bit of an update of what we're hearing. Um, we are starting to converge on information, meaning as we continue to speak to many people and get, you know, sort of orthogonal points of view, there seem to be a handful of things that are converging. Um, but I want to just sort of state what I would take away as the single most important um, lessons are from a what should you do and how should you think about this. The most helpful framework that I think um, we've elucidated so far um, comes down to basically asking two questions. Are you in an area where there is a community outbreak? Yes or no. Two, are you an individual who is at risk? Or do you live in close proximity to someone who is at risk? And let's define what at risk means. Um, it is not simply uh, being, you know, quote unquote old, um, which is sort of being discussed as over the age of 55. It's also type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, smoking, um, an underlying history of lung disease, cardiovascular disease, or high blood pressure. All of these things would put you into a higher risk category. And for reasons I don't want to get into right now, just due to time, um, and we'll save that for the podcast, which we're sort of trying to accumulate information into. Um, just, I think you want to trust me on this one. I hate saying trust me. That's such an awful thing to say, um, that there are a subset of people that are at higher risk, but it's not just a break by age. Furthermore, um, while children below the age of about 10 seem largely protected, presumably because they don't bind, they don't have the same binding receptors uh, for the virus, although that's highly speculative, um, even a young, healthy 20-year-old or 30-year-old is not fully immune. And um, so, so we would sort of say, are you high risk, low risk? Are you in a, um, an area with community infection already? Yes, no. If you can answer no to both of those questions, um, I think probably the best course of action is just avoiding large groups. Um, you can decide how far you want to take that. That would potentially include not going out to restaurants or you know, going to movie theaters or getting on airplanes. Um, but again, there is no clear guidance on this at this point and it becomes a very personal decision. Um, and secondly, I would say meticulous, if not maniacal hygiene with respect to hand washing. Um, this other business about wearing face masks and stuff, there's really no evidence that that is going to add value. And if anything, it provides a false sense of security that um, you may end up contaminating yourself more likely as you're fidgeting with the mask. Um, but there's no doubt about it that hand washing and avoiding close contact with people in large groups is the best course of action. Now, what if you said yes to one of those questions? Either you are yourself high risk or live with someone high risk or you are in a um, in a community where the uh, virus has already taken hold. In that situation, um, again, and I hate saying this because I understand the cost of this is very high, but one has to consider more extreme measures um, of greater social distancing. So um, again, there's so much I just want to talk about right now, but I'm, I, I want to be very thoughtful and careful about um, how much this information is congruent with the, the best and the brightest people out there, and we're still sort of aggregating, converging, and assimilating that information. But I, I did want to say tonight those things because I think those are the most important decisions that people have to make. Um, and two people can come to the exact same, um, look at the exact same facts that and come to, to two diff different uh, ways of, of thinking about this. The final thing I would say is, again, um, I, I'm really hopeful that in a month, I'm looking back thinking, wow, Peter, you really overreacted to this. Um, that will not be a bad thing. There, there will have been a cost to it, but it won't be a bad thing. The bad thing would be the opposite, uh, in my opinion, which would be to uh, view this as overblown and to look back and regret that. So um, I hope this is helpful.